Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to another sales update. It's been a minute since I've done a sales update because I uh, haven't had a lot of interesting sales uh, to update you on because sales have been really slow, but I've been, uh, I've been collecting inventory and buying inventory. So hopefully next month, this is really going to start paying off. If you're new to the channel, my name is Doug. This is Doug Sales. And this is the part of the channel where I go over some of my sales that I've done across all the platforms that I'm selling on. Not only do I show you the items that were sold, I tell you exactly how much I earned after fees and shipping and, uh, and all that stuff uh, for each item. And I might have a little story here and there about the item. So some people say I talk too much, but that's fine. That's just part of this channel. Uh, it's, you know, I hope for it to be educational and I hope somewhat entertaining for people who do like hearing the little stories. So just to tell you how many items I sold since the last sales update, I've made 22 eBay sales. I've made two Poshmark sales and two Instagram sales. Like Poshmark is just not doing well for me. Maybe it's the vintage. Uh, I know a lot of people do a lot of boutique sales and name brand sales and stuff like that on Poshmark. Maybe the vintage just isn't uh, as big over on Poshmark. Uh, I made two Instagram sales. I'll show you those and kind of tell you how those transactions went if you're interested in how you do transactions on Instagram. And of course, I'm going to show you some of my eBay sales. But before I get started on that, I just want to show you that I have opened up a Depop store. So I did kind of look into Depop when I was reselling several years ago and I made like three sales on Depop, but I deleted everything from my store because I wasn't selling on it anymore. But for vintage, this is just one of the places to go. Um, the last four or five days I've been adding stuff on Depop. Yeah. I've only had it going for about four or five days. I've yet to make my first sell since re-adding, but here is the store right here, blues city vintage. And there's just some of the items that I've added so far. I'm adding vintage and uh, modern kind of trendy brand name, like sporty brand name items is kind of what's going up on there. So if you have a Depop store, go ahead and follow me. Let me know that you saw it on the YouTube channel and I will follow you back. All right, on to the sales. This first t-shirt I'm just showing you because I feel like it's a little unique. So this is a shovel head t-shirt. And after some research, I found out shovel head is a type of motorcycle engine they put in Harley Davidson machines, 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 Harley Davidson motorcycles. Yeah, there we go. So I'm not a big motorcycle guy, so I wasn't familiar with shovel head, but I knew it was vintage. Uh, so you see the the tag there and it had like a single stitch on the sleeve. So I knew it was older, 95 or older, uh, but this shirt did very well. Now I didn't get full asking price for this. The, the way I sold this particular t-shirt is I started at the end of every month, like the last week of every month. Uh, you know how you have listings that are eligible to send offers. I'm going to send offers to everything that I I want to get out of the store or everything that I think deserves to have an offer sent, you know, if it's, if it's like an old listing or something like that. So I did that with this shirt and I sent an offer probably, probably took off too much. I had it up for 50, but I sent an offer for 34 99 and they purchased it almost immediately. I'd say within five minutes of me sending the offer, somebody purchased it. I paid shipping on this and I earned $25 and 81 cents on this particular shirt. All right, now you heard me say I paid shipping. I'm going through a transitional period right now where I am removing free shipping from all of my items because I really haven't seen a difference in sales between charging free shipping and charging shipping. And there, the shipping is just so expensive right now. To me, it just doesn't feel worth it. And I'll show you some examples in some sales of, of like how the difference is uh, between like your final earnings when you're paying shipping. And like I said, I just haven't seen a difference yet. So I'm, I'm charging shipping with all my items now. But onto the shirt you see on the screen, this is Mount Olive Pickle Company t-shirt, right? And it says Pickle Cum Laude on the front. It has a picture of a pickle on it. Thought it was an interesting shirt. It is a Jersey's brand shirt. This is one of the more common vintage tags that you'll see in the thrift stores. And I just like little shirts like this and it's sold. Let's see. I think that I think I sold this one as well uh, from the eligible send offers. I sent an offer for $19.99 and it sold. So I paid the shipping and for a shirt that costs $19.99 when I pay shipping, I earned $12.34. I mean, it's still still profit. I probably paid 
two, three dollars for the shirt. So, you know, uh, it's it's not bad profit when you actually look at the percentages. All right, next is the uh, Clemson Tigers uh, coaches jacket. So I'm just throwing this out because anything with you know Nike brand and a team name on it, especially if it's new with tags like this was. You know, there were two of these when I found them. There was one for Kentucky, one for Clemson. They were $4.99 a piece, and both of them have sold now, uh, both for $34.99. So I had this one for $34.99, free shipping. It sold at full asking price, $34.99. Like I said, I paid the shipping, and I earned $25.30 on that one. Not a bad flip for 5 bucks. All right, this is a unique item. I just like it because it's old, and it's, a, it's an old golf shirt. It's a old Golden Bear by Jack Nicholas shirt, and it's really thin, very lightweight. And I just, for some reason, I just have a thing for old, old golf shirts. So I picked this one, and I've been trying to sell it for twenty four ninety nine. But once again, I sent this on listings, eligible to send offers, and I sent an offer for twenty one ninety nine. Uh, it was purchased. I paid shipping, so I earned fourteen dollars and sixty two cents on this shirt. So look out for your old golf shirts. But the thing about golf shirts are they have to be in great condition because they're considered nicer. So people don't like to wear them if they have a lot of stains and holes on them and stuff like that. Decent return on that. Not what I wanted, but uh, you know, I've had this for a while, so I'll take it. Are right, we got a Tommy Bahama, just like a plain blank pocket t-shirt with the little, with the Tommy Bahama logo on it. A couple little holes. See, Salvation Army does this crap right there. They staple their tags like right in the collar. And that's what you see. That's what you see right there. You see the two holes right there, but I disclosed those holes, posted it for $24.99 or listed it for $24.99. And I got this full asking price. I paid the shipping and I earned about $17.18 on this shirt. I got this shirt on a 25% off day. So I probably paid around $2.50 for the shirt. So a pretty good return on that one. Here we go. Another vintage golf shirt. This one is... Hogan. This is so this this brand Hogan has uh, evolved into the brand Ben Hogan. So if you've ever heard of Ben Hogan, he was a, he was a golfer. So he has his own line of clothing and clubs and you know golfing equipment stuff like that. Found this one in a thrift store and it had the tag on it that was you know on sale that day too. So it was like three ninety nine and I got it like fifty percent off of 399 and it had the original tag on it right there and it has a date of september of 1984 on it so i knew exactly when this shirt was up for sale so i was able to put that in the listing and they were trying to sell it for 25 dollars. i thought that was kind of cool i turned around and sold it for 32 dollars full asking price but i paid the shipping and i earned 24 dollars and 18 cents on the final uh with the final earnings for this so Good flip on that one. Uh, I really enjoyed finding this and selling it. All right, here's a shirt that I sold. It's not a big money maker, but I, I bring this shirt up because um, unless you're really into vintage like I am, uh, some of you might look past this shirt because there's not much to it, right? Uh, first off, you got to recognize the tag. Mid to early 90s, through the Loom tag. It's another pretty common one you see in the thrift stores if you're a beginner in the vintage world. So I noticed the tag right away, and this is from 1996, I believe. Yeah, North uh, North Texas Irish Festival. So it was on sale for $14.99, and the last time I was reselling, I actually had this shirt for a long time, and it never sold or gained any traction. So somebody finally bought it for full asking price, $14.99. I paid the shipping, and with me paying shipping, I only earned $8.54 but still probably a good return. I probably pay $2 for the shirt, but I mainly show you this one uh, just so, you know, just really pay attention to your dates and festivals and tags and stuff like that. Cause those shirts, uh, people want those shirts. All right, here's an Elvis shirt. This came from a buyout that I did from a friend of mine. Uh, I didn't do a video and tell you guys about the, about that buyout, but I bought a bunch of items from this friend of mine uh, for $140 None of the items were vintage. They were all shirts like this, like pop culture and uh, brand name shirts, like uh, like Nike shirts and stuff like that, or like sports shirts, or I don't know, just just shirts kind of in that in that range, you know. And this is one of the shirts that I bought from him. It wasn't listed long, and I'll tell you the reason that I bought that I accepted the offer on this. Had it up for twenty four ninety nine, but somebody made me an offer of fifteen dollars on this shirt. Uh, there are a lot of these shirts out there of this particular shirt. 
when I was doing research. There were a lot of them out there. I felt kind of lucky that mine got chosen. Does that make sense? When, when you're in a situation like this and you know there's a lot of, a lot of shirts, you're competing with a lot of people, I went ahead and took the offer. So this shirt just happened to be their size, I guess, and just perfect for them. So that's why I did it. I accepted an offer of $15. Uh, but the difference here is the buyer paid shipping. This probably came uh, close to after my transition where I was adding shipping to all my items again. So the buyer paid shipping, and because the buyer paid shipping and uh, it's a $15 sale, I actually earned $14.08 on this sale. And I believe with that uh, with that haul from my friend, uh, I paid. I ended up paying a little over seven dollars per item uh, for all the items that I bought for him. So fourteen oh eight. That's doubling pretty much what I paid uh, for the shirt. So I'm okay with that. Even and I knew it wasn't a big money bringer uh, anyway. So a uh, good sell there. All right, here's a vintage Chevy hat from the nineties. Uh, this Chevy Chevy hat has been has gotten a lot of attention. It had a lot of watchers. I even had a guy send me an offer for this hat. I accepted it, and then he never paid. <laughs> so I relisted it, put a new price on it, and the guy sent me another offer. And I declined, and it was like a way lower offer than uh, the original offer that uh, he sent before. So I declined it. I declined it, and uh, I told him no. I said, don't send me any more offers on this. <laughs> Regardless of that, somebody bought this. I had it on sale for $25. And, and yes, for some reason, I've started doing my prices like this, 25.00 instead of 99. I don't know why. I have no logical reason behind it, but I'm just doing it now. And the buyer paid shipping. So with a $25 sale and the buyer paying shipping, I earned $22.75 on this hat. Okay, here's a vintage Halloween shirt. And I'm bringing this shirt up just as an example of something that we all need to do at times, okay? Had this shirt up for sale, $15.99 plus shipping. Now, when I was reselling this shirt before, I actually went back and like I found uh, the original picture that I took of this shirt when I was reselling before. I've had this shirt since 2015. So I've had it a very long time and I wasn't able to sell it before. So somebody sent me an offer of $7 for this shirt. And for a shirt that I have not been able to sell, and it's not even in season for Halloween, so maybe that's why they thought they'd get it cheaper, cheaper, I don't know, but... There have been several Halloweens that have passed and it has not sold. So I went ahead and accepted it. Again, like I said earlier, when I felt lucky that mine was being chosen, I just felt lucky that this shirt was being purchased. And $7 is technically a win when it comes to this because I never pay. Uh, I usually pay $3.50 to $5.50 an item when I'm thrifting. You know, it's still money back in my pocket. So I went ahead and took it just to get it out the door. Buyer paid shipping. And let me tell you, when the buyer pays shipping, with this being a $7 sale, do you know how much I earned on this shirt? I earned $7.14 on this shirt. So when the buyer pays $7 plus shipping plus tax, I don't, I think, I don't know if the percentage is taken out of the tax added. I know, I know eBay, like the final sale price plus shipping, they, they take a percentage out of that. And usually the buyer pays more shipping than what it costs for us to ship. So when it came down to it, I ended up earning 14, 14 cents more than what I sold the shirt for. So that's why I want to start charging shipping because if I'd had to pay shipping for this, I wouldn't have been happy. And just as an example, like the North Texas t-shirt that I showed you, the, the, the Irish festival, 1996 t-shirt that I sold for 14.99 and that I paid shipping for, I earned $8 and 54 cents on that shirt. So that's just, you know, like a dollar and 40 cents more than the shirt that sold for $7. So there's a good reason to like charge shipping right there, like instantly. And I know those are for low dollar shorts, but uh, shirts, but still like it just, I'm charging shipping from now. So anyway, all right, here we go with your sports tees. These are always good. This one was in excellent condition and the, the logo on the front was actually embroidered. I had it for sale for $30 plus shipping, and it sold full asking price, buyer paid shipping, uh, and I earned $26.72 on this. So look for your sports shirts. This one just so happened to fall in the vintage category with it being 2003. A lot of sports shirts, especially if they're in pristine condition like this one, this one was in amazing condition. No stains, no holes, nothing. No, that's not embroidered. Never mind. That's not embroidered. But anyway, still a great shirt. All right, here we have a vintage Pearl Drums 
t-shirt. Now, I didn't know what Pearl was, but, you know, on the back, it said the best reason to play drums. So I looked it up. And of course, it's a brand name for drums. So I've had this shirt up for, I think, as much as $50, but I lowered it to 40 just to see if I could get it to move. And sure enough, somebody just last night, actually, uh, I woke up this morning and this had sold for $40, full asking price, buyer paid shipping. And on this shirt, I earned $35 and 26 cents. Now a couple uh, Instagram sales. Here is the Instagram page right here, Blue City Vintage at Instagram. So uh, go follow if you, if you want to. But I post uh, all my vintage items here. You know, sometimes I, I, I make sales uh, straight from here. And here is one of them. So I, I pride myself on being Blue City Vintage, which kind of represents the city I live in, Memphis. Memphis is uh, otherwise known one of their nicknames is Blue City. So uh, I have a lot of people from Memphis that actually follow the account. So anytime I get something local, which this is, this is a, a bar uh, over by the University of Memphis called Newbies. And it's been around for a very long time. So this shirt just happened to be from the 90s. Uh, it was single stitched. Let's see. There's the single stitch right there. It was single stitch. I knew it was from 95 or earlier. Had some stains on it, you know, it didn't matter. So, and there you can see how I list things right here. I even tagged the bar and uh, they actually liked it. They liked it. See, look right here, they newbies, they liked it. So yeah, so that was cool. And then I put tags that are relevant uh, to vintage t-shirts and vintage items. And then specifically to the city and the bar, you know, all of it right there. That's how I list the items on Instagram. So if somebody sent me a message, and asked me, I was, I was selling it for $20. Somebody asked me if I would do 15 and then uh, meet up with them to give them the shirt. And I usually don't do meetups because I, I work full time. And it's just, you know, the, the time that I'm not at work is the time that I'm working on this or hanging out with friends and stuff like that. So I don't like doing meetups and chasing people around, but I was actually going to my sister's house in the part of town that he was in. He literally lived uh, like a block away from my sister. So uh, that worked out. I met up with him. He sent me $50, not 50. He sent me $15 in a Venmo payment. So um, I asked him to pay me on Venmo. It's a secure transaction. And that's why I do Venmo. I don't do cash app, but I'll do PayPal or I'll do Venmo, something like that. So sent me a Venmo payment and he got the shirt for $15. Here is a, another shirt that I sold on Instagram. This says Whitehaven Steelers football. This is another uh, shirt that is Memphis themed or, or local to Memphis. Whitehaven is a, a school, a high school here in Memphis, uh, but they're the Whitehaven Tigers. So I don't even know what Whitehaven Steelers means, but I had somebody message me. Um, actually, here, go to the messages here. Nope, maybe she didn't message on here, but anyway, but she sent me a message and she wanted to purchase this one because she said Whitehaven, which is the school that Elvis went to. I guess I don't, I don't, or where he lived, not, not the school he went to It's where he lived. It was where Elvis lived. He lived in Whitehaven. She said Whitehaven reminds her of Elvis. So she wanted to buy the shirt. So she sent me a $15 Venmo payment and she sent me her address in a Instagram message. And I went to PayPal and I went to their ship station and I created the label there and I shipped it to her. So I paid the shipping for it. So I didn't make a lot of money on it. Probably paid uh, just under $5 to ship it. I knew this is not a big money getter, this shirt. And I knew, um, some, I, I just thought somebody local was going to buy this, but it was somebody that wasn't local, which is fine. But this is just one of those shirts I wanted to get redistributed to people. And one of those shirts that I wanted to represent my brand because it's a local item. Does that make sense? So uh, I didn't mind uh, selling that one for so cheap, I probably only paid $2 for the shirt anyway, maybe less, maybe less. Uh, so who knows? So anyway, I was happy to make that sale. That's it. I made two sales on Poshmark, uh, but uh, those aren't really worth showing. And honestly, if, if, if I'm being frank with you guys, I'm going to stop listing items on Poshmark uh, for the simple fact that it doesn't seem that the things that... I'm listing on Poshmark, get a lot of traction. Also, Poshmark charges 20%. They charge 20% uh, on the final sale. And, and I think I just think that they I think they gouge buyers on shipping. I think they overcharge for shipping. I forget their 
flat rate costs. I believe it's something like 750 or 775. So that doesn't matter if if the if the item is six ounces or if it's pound and a half. You know, it's seven. 75 or whatever. And I mostly sell, sell t-shirts. So when people look at the t-shirts and the prices I'm selling them for, they factor in that shipping cost. So then they lowball me on offers uh, for any of my items, but I don't even get a lot of offers. I don't even think I get a lot of traction on my Poshmark account. So I think I'm going to stop doing that. So I'm going to leave what I have up for now and just, you know, keep sharing it and hope that it maybe you get some sales. Uh, but I may eventually take everything down, but it, it took a lot of work to get everything up. So I don't know if I'm going to do that or not, but Hey, thanks for tuning in to the sales update guys. That's it for today. Uh, we're going to have, um, some more videos coming up real soon. Uh, I'm not thrifting a lot right now because I've spent a lot. I spent a lot in March. I spent a lot of money in March. Uh, maybe, uh, after the month's over, uh, I'll do a video on my numbers for March and just show you where I'm at. So that's it for this video. I got a lot of listing to do, a lot of pictures to take. So hopefully uh, I'll have another sales update for you guys in a couple weeks. Uh, but I, I'll have some other videos in between then. So go follow the socials down in the description. Like the video. I'd like to hear some comments. I'd like to talk to you guys. And if you're new, don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. Take care, guys.